Hey guys, Balti W here, back with another VOD review. We're going to watch Crew, Chapix, Beehive, and Ritz, their utter domination in last weekend's EU FNCS, the second week, where they basically, I think they got an average placement of four, um, five out of six games, they were better than top three, which is ridiculous. So we're going to see and find out how they do it. And we're kind of keeping on track with, you know, at least one solo cash cup review and at least one FNCS VOD review. I want to do one extra one a week, but we'll see if I get to that. We might be doing Liquid Luck tomorrow or something else. If I have the motivation, it's three VOD reviews a week is kind of hard. Anyways, one thing I saw from Fishy Cup off of these guys is they all immediately come straight for the Slurp Barrels, which I find very, very interesting. And they have... A really really cool way that they land I didn't notice this at the time but they all come and group up next to the barrels as soon as they check like a few floor loot spots and then they instantly get pretty much full shield or at least a little bit of shield without having to you know scatter around the place oh I got minis oh I got big pots oh I did this oh I did that you know when you're with your team it's like well I have a big pot over here if you need it. Do you still need a mini? Do you still need a, a slurp? So really, really cool. And also just based off what I what I saw when they landed, the way that they all kind of went different directions before doing this, I'm not gonna go to every single person, but we just saw, um, we saw Ritz's path. And I'm pretty sure it's very well optimized so that they like try to get as many entrances as possible and check a few floor loots before they get to that spot. Do they all have a gun? No, Chapix doesn't have a gun. Oh, because he goes and gets this first. Yeah. Flight optimization, probably possible, but it also depends on, you know, exactly how the drops and drops have a little bit of RNG in them. But very cool optimization. This is also possible in Slurpy Swamps. Is this possible anywhere else? Is there Slurp Barrels? Oh, yes. In Sweaty Sands, there's Slurp Barrels. Probably not as... No, is there... No, I don't think I'm, I'm tripping. Not in sweaty sands. There's one extra place that they have them. But pretty interesting. Oh, what the heck? What's with this? What's with this? This is this is a counter strat. I think it's the first counter strat I have ever seen. To just dominate right here early on quickly. This is always, if a squad is dropping up here, they are splitting 99.9% of the time. Like it makes no sense to drop up here without splitting pretty heavily. I love this early game movement, man. I love it, All right? Think about the loot that they got, this big thing here, this house, this house and probably something else that I'm not even really paying attention to compared to Rateful and Trax. One house here, he's finally getting this chest here, but also like there's, you know, floor loot and a chest or something like that compared to at least two chests on each of these players here and the fact that they get grouped so fast. This is cool. This is exactly what having a coach Really, 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 really good for. But he's very aware. I like the fact that he's very aware. <laughs> Little pickaxe. He knows that there's he's no he knows that they're there. He hundred percent knows they're there. Dude, that's sick. That's sick. As soon as there's pressure, they're all out, boom, behind the, out from behind the hiding. And obviously knowing all this stuff that you can hide behind too. This is, a, this is also really well done by these guys. By tracks to peek over, to know that they're there, to try to kind of feel them out. And then just to back up. He has to waste a lot, but they almost, almost got very, very clean. Actually, they still might. He still might. If he can get over this hill, he's chilling, but. Alright, at this point, I'm getting a little like, hmm. 
Hmm, is this too much, you know? I think it is. I think it is. Interesting. Alright, because think about how much they've still left behind here. But, important to note as well, is when you think about this hill and just having tracks, just having this one guy up here, right? how much pressure that causes on you and what a difficult time you could have if you don't control this hill rotating out of Craggy. Rotating out of Craggy. If there's this one guy up here, all of a sudden he's beaming and shoot, or he's sh shooting every single one of you guys as you make it towards your, make your way towards zone. If it's this way, if it's this way, whatever. So having just control over this hill, if, even if they back out right now, I'd say still probably a little bit too much of an investment just for that, just for pushing off one person or possibly having more people up here. It's an interesting concept too. This control allows them an easy first rotate without having to worry too much. As long as nothing else funky is going down. Yeah, now they back up. It's like Chapix has one person to control. And also, very cool how, yes, there's a guy on the side here. But that doesn't make it so that, you know, they do the best at what they can, right? Chapix still wants to be up here. But now he's pinched. But because Crew has this angle all the way back, it's not really a pinch. Because Rateful can't peek. Um without crew also taking snipe shots at him. This is a very cool concept in squads and also another reason why I kind of like and, and love squads so much is that, sure, a lot of, a lot of you guys are going to say, well, Bala, isn't this griefing? Isn't this griefing? Um, well, sure, you know, the fact that they lost this control is very, very bad for this team. It's very, 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 very bad for this team. Um, but the way that they play it makes it so that it's not griefing, obviously. Chapik staying here for control, forcing this team to be, you know, in a little bit of shambles. I think that's very cool. Oh, you, you know, I, I didn't even think. I didn't even think until I saw Beehive in chat talk about Storm Surge. I'm an idiot. Like, I, I wasn't even thinking about it for whatever reason. Storm Surge is so important. And on top of the control, on top of the, the, you know, yes, control, I guess is the only thing that really gained from me, or on top of the possibility of getting a kill, this is huge storm surge tax. This is such a good, this is literally a storm surge strat. Literally designed to get early tags. I didn't even think about that. And obviously we'll think about that I'm just so much in solos mode that it's like, yeah, well, Storm Surge never happens in solo cash cup, so I don't even think about it. Yet another element that's kind of super interesting. That kind of stuff is necessary these days. And you should really be thinking about how to get your Storm Surge tags in every different zone. Every different stage of the game, is there a play for you to get Storm Surge tags? But you think about it too, remember, as after first zone, after first zone, everything else is basically, uh, basically random. You can't, you cannot guarantee there will be a team still here. You cannot guarantee there will still be a team in Pleasant. Cannot guarantee there will be a team on bridge. Sure, you can guess based on the motions and patterns that you've studied, but I think first, first early game, first zone is pretty much where everybody's paths are 100%, you know, solid. There's always going to be a team up here. There's always going to be a team here. Um, so I think definitely a, a good spot to get early storm search tags. But think about this too. This will only work if this team up here is smart. This will only work one time. And also keep in mind, look how they have to rotate now. The distance that they've forced these guys to have because they're not sure what's still going on up here is very nice. And also the ripple effects this has, if these guys are still in frenzy or still a little slower, and all of a sudden this team is rotating into them. They're kind of forcing somebody else to end up being in a storm fight, which is really cool too. The ripple effects that that slight movement has. And somebody like Destiny Jesus would definitely be, you know, very, very uh, aware of how all these things happen. 
I love that. I love the, I love those movements. I think that's very, very, very interesting. Okay. Motorboats were on. Okay, they were on. Man. This rotation by these guys is kind of annoying. <laughs> uh, let's do a loadout check. Okay, so no... What are they called? Oh, I always forget. The grappler. Har no harpoons. No harpoons. They do have fish on two people. Oh, and crew spent some time in zone fishing. Interesting. Okay, also, just notice, these guys take shots. And these guys, it's turtle. Yeah, sure. If you guys want to push us, I mean, bad play. But they basically just wait. Are you guys going to move? What's the play? They figure it out, right? They don't, they don't ramp towards them. They very, very, very much just send one person up ahead and chill. Figure out what this team's going to do. Try to make their read and then go from there. Kind of crazy right now. Kind of crazy right now. Uh, slow it down. That's what I was trying to look for. Ooh. Chapix low key went for the little aspect FN, but with his teammates rocket instead. This movement is pretty frustrating for this Chapix team. Okay, they they have to spend quite a lot. Like they, they both, I mean, all these guys basically want to get as far away from the, or as far towards the edge map as possible and for obvious reasons. But at the same time, now look how you freaking move the map, man. There you go. Look at how much more there is than going straight in. I guess technically it's not really that much. But it isn't. It is food for thought, right? Same same concept as trying to get center circle, right? And the popularity of that, the meta tending towards center circle, means that center circle is kind of worse. It's, it's the balance in all things. It's not only it's basically everything in this game is oh, as that becomes popular, it's no longer as good. The only thing is like mechanical stuff, aim. Box fighting tactics. All that stuff, sure. All that stuff is still very, very, very good no matter what. And, oops. There we go. It's an interesting game. Hmm. Hmm. Chapik's movement there was super cool. Not movement, but um Actually all of his movements have been pretty interesting. But I'm talking more like I'm talking like his little gun peaks and stuff like that. Yeah, let's go back real quick. Uh, right here, AR, like the taps. I don't know, it's just, it just feels interesting to me. It's like specifically for a purpose. I mean, the first thing we, we notice is how he backs up off, up off his ramp uh, before he starts to tag and he, he shoots this way, right? Just baiting for an edit and also making sure that there's really no possible way for this guy to, to make an edit and hit him. At the same time, it's also protecting against all the other places. Then the, the single taps? Now that's the, the real question I have, right? The, 
the real like hmm why did he do that and i think the first thing that comes to me mind to me is like the more he does it not only is the more pressure being exerted on this guy right this guy's like trying to hold his floor he's like okay he's pressuring my floor he's pressuring my floor still pressuring my floor this could break i still need to hold this could break this could break this could break this could break and at the same time his team is pressuring through right so it forces this guy to to think about all these different things that is happening and then kind of overexerts him when his team is coming from the front also gives him a time to strike um he could obviously just cone himself but i don't know i think that's pretty interesting weird little quirk I really wish we had nameplates. How did crew get this? Oh, we just missed it. Nah, it's just good pinching. Good pinching. Good pinching all around. <laughs> what is this zone, dude? It's funny how that all that theory that I was talking about all the way back here, <laughs> like actually coming true, but not at the point that I was like even talking about it all, forcing those guys to end up fighting or storm fighting, and then getting the quick third party. That fight, winning that fight, that third party effort, just gave them free entire north side of the map, right? These guys aren't moving. These guys. Oh, there they are. There's Boyer Kalucha in them. They might push over here, right? But, yeah, they actually probably will try to push over here. These guys, probably not, because they're already pushing down. These guys are pressuring straight ahead, and they might go... I don't know. They, they are a wild card. These guys go down and away. But also, given the fact that there's this, might force more people this way. Anyways, we're getting too... Too macro... Too macro. But yeah, winning that fight just won them basically north side of zone for free. They get to, to beach up right here. And it might stay that way. For a long time. Think about everything that this gets you, right? Being so far away from everybody else. Harder to hit snipes. Impossible to be naded impossible to be nated at this at this point all right completely impossible until somebody moves closer the only issue is much much less chance zone goes this way um just because there's less like six zone and stuff like that is it's not going to be like this Right, I don't, I don't think it's po There's probably some section, like out here, where it's like, okay, well, that's too much. You can't go that far. You can't go farther out. I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. We'll have to keep experiencing chapter two, but that's my guess. <laughs> this was the zone I was worried about. <laughs> the one zone I was worried about. This is brutal, man. This is brutal, but people got to prepare, like, the fact that Kalusha and them f went all the way over here means to, that there's definitely no, they were never considering the possibility of doing something in the water, which I, I you know, I kind of agree with just off first glance, but I've never thought of the possibility of this zone, like, sure, I thought about that, that, oh, this could happen, but I've never actually planned for it. It's another interesting thing. They did the same thing. I like it. Oh, who's this? I really like it. Um, it's kind of the same sort of concept we saw with um, with Zayt and them, where they were kind of being like ants and carrying their mask back. Um, but Chappic's extra role too is also to protect. Who is it? Crew? Yeah, I think. No, it wasn't crew actually. Who is it? Ritz? No, Beehive from getting stuck there. Let's crew it a different 
Like super different angle. Yeah, it is. Three different angles. Like, not drastically different, but everything helps. Everything helps. Oh my god, Chapix. Fifth zone, by the way, is where they do a lot of separate actions to, they like have these certain plans and ideas based on, you know, different situations that happen. It feels like. Oh my God. He just got so much damage. How many people was that? How many people was that, Chapix? He actually got a knock too? No way. That must have been a replay thing. He just hit all three of these guys, I think. <laughs> That's hilarious, bro. That's hilarious. And then look at their focus. It's like, oh shit, he's coming behind. And then these guys are actually editing out the front. Um, as far as I remember. I like it. The du this is, it's the back and forth thing that we saw with Zayt, uh, Zayt Saf, High Sky and Commandment with the RPGs, but early on and on somebody who's just based up above him. Plus, the cool thing about the, the cone and when you think about when people ramp up, that's a mistake that people are still making. Uh, they think that because when there's a team based up, however they might be based up, right, and you ramp over them, once you ramp over them, it's done. And if they have high ground, if they have any sort of level of height, they just peek up at the top off of it or to the side, right? But they never end up blocking off the back. Um, so a good guess by Ritz. But also, he, if he's if he's up there enough, he can always sneak something in on their boxes at the front. And it's important too, right? If you think about what could have happened, right? They could have ended up getting six zone and they could have straight up taken height from these guys if they needed to. Right? Because of all the damage they just got done, it's um, a little bit less risky to go against it because they just tagged three guys with an RPG. Uh, obviously they n don't necessarily expect that. And also note, Chapix saw an opportunity for a play, right? This isn't, this isn't a set play. This isn't something that's like, oh, they do this every time, right? Um, this is very clearly like, oh, Chapix found an opportunity. It's like, cool, let's go for it. It might have been, it might be something that they've done in the past, but I really, really like how quickly um, Ritz, after he got the damage done and after he heard Chapix's plans, after he heard, he heard his play, he's ready to go out and do kind of the same thing, but on the other side. I really like that. These slight movements, man, that people do when when they end up being in a tunnel next to somebody, right? Where they're like, oh crap, we're in it, we're in, they're boxing, whatever. And they quickly move to the to the left and also place the stairs. <laughs> That's an ugly stairs. But it's it's so important. Even in solos. So very, very, very important. I just get a third RPG, yes. Yes, they did. I want to see what Beehive actually spotted up there. Huh. 
Um, it's, the the one thing is he's pressuring the team above directly above him, but he also gets so much information about how high height is. We saw Zate Saf commandments reliance on high ground, like at least trying to take high ground, at least seeing that as a possibility. These guys we know for sure are not as interested in it. But still, just the fact that they go for these possibilities is still nice. I missed something from Chapix here. I missed something from Chapix. So decisive. Holy crap. You just did him like that. No way. I didn't know the context of all this. But my man has not. He just got three kills so fast. I'm going back a little bit more because I want to talk about the uh, the spray down from crew into RPG from Chapix and the pacing that he goes at. One more time. That shit was dirty. That trap play. Oh my god. Okay, so crew gets that kill. Oh, he didn't shoot the RPG. <laughs> I don't know. There's there's like a there's a a patience thing there that I don't think anybody you know necessarily. I don't know. It was like he was waiting to see if this was really really worth it. All right. He was looking to see is there an opportunity in the RPG. Or is it, is, are they paying attention at all? Is this a full squad? I think those are the questions he's maybe asking himself when he pauses there before he goes for these kills. Maybe also like when's next zone or where is next zone going? Um, a note about that peak, sure it was left hand. Um, but what he did, he put himself square in the middle and just held his gun out. Uh, and just in this meta, like if you were holding your gun out on somebody, it's like way worse than it even ever was, unless you have those purple pumps and stuff. Uh, but at the same time, if the guy wasn't there when he edited, he could have reset that well too. This trap play is just, I don't even, under, I can't hear what he's like. He just demolished. That was such a good prediction. And I'm trying to figure out what. He heard that caused him to do that. Okay, that wall got blue. Oh, he can actually just see him. I didn't even realize. <laughs> he can actually just see him. That almost costed him. That almost costed him. Right, because he could have held that wall a little bit longer um, when he got through. And just the lag, I guess. I don't know. That definitely could have costed him. Where is, there's Ritz, there's Beehive. Crew is off on his own. Okay. Dang, this trap spam is crazy. Low key, it's better than ever in, in squads to be spamming these traps in that game. It's way better than ever. <laughs> is this just his zone? Does he just breathe? Is he a dolphin? My man's a shark in this. No way. <laughs> he just popped off, bro. He just took out. I'm pretty sure he wiped the entire Xeno can start item. And Nyrox squad. Not just there, but like. 
He also killed uh, somebody earlier. That kind of sucks. But the shotgun into the box. Especially when people don't know exactly um, the situation, the hecticness in Endgame. For example, this guy just edited through there. He's not expecting anybody to come through. They do box up, but they also have really no clue what's going on in the zone because of all the different layers, the water, and everything else. It's very, very, very... Um, actually, the other thing too is like this would never actually happen in solos, right? Because this wall would have got places. I think this guy boxed up. Right, and then his teammate edited through this floor and then edited through this as well. A mistake on the other team's part, sure, um, but something that also happens a lot, right? Because this guy edited in and then reset, this is actually a possibility at all. And something I guess we all have to be uh, become used to, but Chapix takes huge advantage of that. I don't necessarily know if going to the box was the right play, but he did find himself one more kill, which is pretty nice. Meanwhile, Ritz. Okay, third place, freaking 12 kills on Chapix. Come on, man. Holy. Yeah, so maybe he could have gotten a little bit more uh, if he stayed alive slightly longer. Also, he didn't loot anything. So I'm curious, did he have the things that he needed to go forward? Um, or was this kind of just the all-in play that he figured needed to happen? He had 170 wood, hits fish too. Yeah. I think just taking that wall or something is probably better. But anyways, I'm I'm not one to talk. This man just got 11 kills in some of this. Uh, that was actually the sickest sequence of action I think we've seen yet. That was disgusting. That was that was some real stuff. Okay, next game. I think it's a mindset of the plan that makes pros consistently place well. I think it's a mindset. Uh, I think it's both. I think it's both. The first step is mindset. The second step is plan, right? Um, when you watch any of the other big esports, what the heck? Oh, these are the only people who dropped. Freak. There they are. Um, if you watch any other game, mindset. I think mindset is the most important. Like that's 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 known for everything. But once you're at the top, once you are good. Once you're good, once you're these guys, I think the prep and plan is most important for these guys. Right? They got to keep the mindset and they got to keep working on the mindset, but they have to do all these slight optimizations, slight improvements to their games, which I think only comes through planning at this kind of level. I think it really only comes through planning at this, at this level. Okay, this time these guys are gonna be prepared. So I'm curious, do they have another plan? Do they have another idea? Or is this the same thing? Will they run it two times in a row? It looks like it, just based on how they're moving right now, but... Okay. A different approach from a different angle. A slightly different angle, right? And at this point, to be honest, right, Full already sees this. So I'm not a huge fan of the fact these guys already made their adjustment. They got the hill and left immediately, which is cool. I would rather see against some somebody else or a complete different idea, right? Like, because the idea here is the same. And the adjustment is very, the adjustment that you make against coming up this, this way, is the same one you're gonna make anyways. But it was different, right? It's a different, it's a different push. These guys are also, oh no, these guys came out of uh, Pleasant, so slightly different. Where did the Clusia guys go? Man, it is actually crazy interesting to study these squad movements. We didn't really do that too much. I guess we did in uh, the Zate review, the NAEs review. So no tags this time. What's the next put? What's the next step? What's the next step here? Obviously it's loot, but how do you guys get your tags? 
Who pops off? Traffic's pops off. Nice. Man. Y'all are. Y'all are getting dangerously close. Dangerously close. Really cool how early this brick base was made. Um, but their stride also kind of relied on catching zone here. We've we've seen them kind of catch zone with the they caught first zone in the last game. And they caught first and second here. Also, think about the investment of brick. When did they set this up? Second zone was uh, was just revealed, I think. It was, it was crew. I believe set this up. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. It's really not an investment if you have the time to refarm it. But the, the, here, here, we, we haven't explained the fake base in a while. Let's explain it for a sec. Look at this team. It wants, can move in. They can move in even farther here. Obviously they're going to go more center. Um, but I it, like if they set up something here and here, all of a sudden they've zoned all this space for them. Well, they can, they can just work with it. They can work with all this. Um, the idea is, oh, there's a team up there. There's no point in us going close to it. Let's try to break line of sight with this. And of course, it's also like been recently, um, been baiting grenade usage and stuff like that, right? Which is cool too. Can I get eight times on replay mode? Pretty please. We yeah, have breaks his floors when he needs pyramid picking, peeking. Which is pretty, uh, pretty odd to me. Uh, not odd as in like, oh, it's bad. It's like, oh, why? That's the, that's the real oddity. Why? <laughs> may ask why is Chappic still an FA he's nuts specifically because he is nuts man specifically because he is nuts that he is still an FA I I do not believe that Chappic being an FA is like not his own choice Clean, clean. Um, a note on retaking underneath somebody. So how big they built, but at the same time, they're starting to encroach slightly onto the person's base down below, or down, uh, that, that's built up above. Also important note is how Beehive is all the way back here. Um, one, I always say, oh, it's different angles, but it's also actually kind of anti-nade and anti-explode. Uh, Just like somebody tries to sneak an RPG in there. What if you, you know, mess up the edit or there's too much lag or whatever? Um, it's protection against that, which is cool too. But he still also has an angle. Nice. Double RPG again. No sniper this time on anybody. No kills, but they did just get a bunch of storm surge. Storm surge not too super relevant. Just got a kill. How do you do that? Oh, just hard to do. Also, it'd be interesting to see how the nade nerf actually impacts nades and squads. Like. 
because it's it's pretty interesting. We actually haven't seen them, uh, and this is week two of FNCS. I think EU kind of kind of gave up on nades at a certain point, right? Sure, they were very strong, but it was pretty rare um, that you would see a full squad wipe or something like that. Sure, you definitely get some damage um, in most cases. But the way that people have started to adapt to it has kind of pushed it out of that that way. And now that it's down to six, I think, I think at least in EU it'll be the 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 relative end of nade season, right? Like, sure, there's definitely it's still gonna be usage, and there's gonna be certain squads that 100% still use it. Um, but we have not seen them in two games so far really carry nades at all except for this game and the only reason they're carrying is because they got it off of other people right kind of crazy how much i guess they've gotten a bunch of or uh, a kill or actually they've they basically got two two kills worth of loot, but still pretty crazy how much AR ammo they have. Um, and I like Crew's choice to use a pistol over an AR. Kind of saves on ammo a little bit. Or they couldn't find one. Is there a way to see if he has any ammo in replay mode? No, I don't think so. That would have told us exactly. Like, in order for us to answer the question about, oh, did, like, did you drop your AR ammo to your teammates? We'd have to actually watch. Fifth zone is across the way. Not the worst possible, but almost the worst possible. Worst possible would have been here, but still. That's rough. That's rough, but again, not in the world. Remember, they win this game. In the game. I think done are the days of... No mobility means you can't win unless you have zone. I think that's completely done for. What a free rotate. Holy... How is that so free? <laughs> Straight through the middle. As everybody was on this side and this side. And there's a mountain that nobody's paying attention to. And then they're all box fighting on their own self. I'm gonna watch that from uh, drone free. Huh. <laughs> funny, right? It's a funny looking take, but it works. These guys are also occupied on a certain certain spot. One goes to one direction, the other goes to the other direction, but they 90 a couple times before going straight on it. And none of them build with their, like, go up together, right? If anybody was going to, it was going to be on this side. But um, you can't 90 with the teammate yet. When are you guys going to come up with 90 as a as a team? <laughs> What's that happening? What's that happening, Team Parallel? Team 90s. And our YouTubers can be like, how to do the best, the fastest Team 90s. How to do Mongrel Team 90s. How to do Liquid Luck 90s. And then it's just like a bunch of Bizzle 90s. They're all jumping with each other. <laughs> just boomer, boomer Team 90s. Come on, Team Parallel. Come on, Parallel Beats. Come on, EJ. Where's it at? Yeah. <laughs> New multi 90 strat exclamation point OP. Yes, the most OP 90 strat you'll ever use in FNCS.
No, but back to the point of the way they take height there is never head on, right? Think about the differences in how we play now uh, compared to way back when. You think all the way back to maybe TwitchCon or the old squad meta. Or, you know, when we, we, we all experimented with squads a little bit after, after TwitchCon. We all used to these. Whoa, what the heck just happened? Do I have a brightness key? Wait, what? Oh, that was weird. Um, we used to God ramp. Everybody used to ramp up. One person. Oh, hold on. We can draw this from this direction. Head on. We used to God ramp. Yay, this is me. This is Elevate. Remember Elevate's video about uh, God ramping? He's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> His old scrim strats. Yes, sir. And now it's just two RPGs from two different teams and all of a sudden it's gone, right? Used to be, used to be focused by one team at a time. Now, not so much. You try to go for something like that. Not only does that entire squad start firing at you and be like, yeah, okay, cool. It's really easy to actually just shoot you down. But the entire lobby is doing the same thing too. Not to mention, you think about 90s. 90s are actually when you don't know what's around you. 90s are actually kind of safe-ish. Think about how many times you try to shoot somebody who's 90. Sure, you get a tag or something like that. You might get one or two tags. But then all of a sudden they're gone. You can't hit them anymore, right? Because they've turned the corner. So in, in some extent, they're kind of safe, right? Because somebody's not going to stop shooting the guy who's coming into zone straight on um, to shoot a guy who's going to be gone. Like the angle's going to be gone in a second, right? Plus it like blocks this angle and then that angle and then that angle. So it like kind of stops people subconsciously from shooting at you from a bunch of different uh, teams. Boomer shots. Okay. Um, I don't know when zone was revealed, but note the length of their tarp. Okay, zone was revealed for quite some time. Okay, here's where it's getting revealed. I'm gonna go back to drone free and come over to them right now. Okay. I actually thought that he started this earlier because I have seen in EU people like tarp slightly into zone if they have like extra mats and stuff like that just to cover a lot of distance to give them more opportunity to get zone. Uh, but in this case, it's instantly zones revealed. They take a couple pressure shots over here, but they're building out. Okay, let's go on to one of these guys who's actually tunneling. Oh, Ooh, little innovation here. A little innovation. Uh, really? Okay, you put the drone all the way over there. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Replay mode. Um, I'm just gonna draw it, I guess. All right. So zone is there over here. This is them. This is the bad people. They are pressuring them with double RPG. Zone's going this way. All right. Crew is putting an extra layer instead of coning on top. He's walling this entire side. But instead of coning here, he's actually just too widening. Um, because it's easier to catch and less possible for extra RPG damage. If this hits straight on, I'm pretty sure it's doing damage to the bottom. Or if it hits the bottom, I'm pretty sure it's doing damage this entire thing. Um, so that's possibly quite easy to knock down when he extends it a little bit you saw how he was able to catch himself that was that was only because it was too wide rather than singular it also gives you much more space to work with right your team can actually cover a little bit more i like it very cool Man, this gets so important. Um, also, note, he did not start ramping over this other team until Ritz and Beehive, I believe. No, uh, they might have. Let's go back slightly. 
until this pressure was enough to push that team off of possibly contesting height. Split rockets. Here they go. I love these lookbacks. Actually, this lookback by Beehive. I thought they were both double RPGing this team. Who is it? I guess it's traffics. Also, Ritz right there. The little 72 hours. Uh, building out to catch the rocket to stop the tarp from taking any damage. You'd be surprised. Um, last time we watched the Fishy Cup, I think it was Mr. Savage's team uh, that actually had height multiple times. They had height very, 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 very many times. And they kept losing it over and over to the RPG spam. So you think about the two big uh, tr trouble points and... Uh, yeah, trouble points that teams had, squad teams had, in the early squad meta chapter 2, right? It was nades, and it was RPG spam, right? Nades, RPG spam, and, and no mobility. No mobility, I think we've all kind of said, okay, cool, yeah, yeah, you can rotate. You just need to spend your mats. Don't forget you have four teammates. That was the answer to that. Anti-grenade, we've started seeing these kind of spread out bases, people being wide and stuff like that. But RPG spam was something that I think everybody was just like, oh, well, I guess we just have to deal with it. But no, you don't actually, right? The, 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 the two innovations is the, the blocking, the, the pushing out, using your ramps and building outwards to catch the RPG rather than let it hit your big tarp. And then something that uh, crew is doing right here, the, the double wide tarp rather than single wide uh, with a pyramid. I think is very nice. Very, very nice. Okay, so I was, I was talking about Mr. Savage. Uh, Mr. Savage's team, they did very well at pressuring high and keeping high, but when they would expand because everybody was pressuring them back, which is correct, that's what you're supposed to do, this guy would keep getting knocked down and they'd waste all this different mats. Think about also, we saw the double RPG kind of staggered approach to uh, to taking height that Zate Saf Commandment and High Sky had. Right? Think about what's happening in this, in this instance. The two guys with the RPG, Pressuring, pressuring, pressuring. The last guy is just making sure that this tarp is not falling. If he needs to pressure to do that, he's doing that. If he needs to repair to do that, he's doing that. If he needs to catch a rocket to do that, he's doing that. So that combination of everything makes this height, this height is sturdy. This height is hard to break. It is hard to lose. We haven't seen one of them get knocked down yet. I'm gonna go back to crew. Who's ahead? Probably Ritz. No, Ritz is not the guy who's ahead. Uh, can't do this. Is he? Oh yeah, he is. It is Ritz. All right, the guy who doesn't have the RPG. The other guy who doesn't have the RPG. And meanwhile, is this them who went down? Oh my God, these guys are brilliant. These guys are brilliant. Yes, it is them. <laughs> their big tarp at the beginning right it was there they continued it with the big the, the people who haven't used their mats and then Chapix and beehive were behind with the rpgs in the first place oh it's not is it beehive i can't even tell we gotta use this drone free like everybody they have two guys on top and the two guys below and we, we've, we've seen this in duos. We've seen this all the way back to World Cup. This kind of separate, different uh, different high ground holds where you're, you're double layering in order to catch yourself if you get knocked down or be able to build back up and also to keep pressure off yourself. Um, this came about because of the, the glider redeploy strat, which was basically this, but very high with glider redeploy and then a person down below um, who can, yeah. It was also an anti rift go strat. Like, man. Speedy, where you at, man? You, you were saying the squad meta's gonna get stale? Nah, 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 chill. This shit excites me. This shit. Ooh! It's beautiful. It's funny how the things that were strong for a certain reason are still strong for other reasons. It's crazy how that works. It's 
crazy how that works. There, he's still down there, by the way. Um, I think it's Chapix. Yep. Chapix still down here. Single tarping and connecting. Meanwhile, they're just slightly connecting to Chapix's. And they're chilling. They are big chilling. From here, I think it's history. The, the fact that they have not gotten pressured a single time. Obviously, we, we've talked about that when we, when we were watching Mongrel and Mitro uh, back in World Cup duos, right? It's, or no, sorry, Mongrel and Benji. And actually, when we even go further to MMB and trios, right? If you have height and you exert so much pressure, there's nothing that these guys can do. There's nothing that anybody on low ground can do to even pressure you. They have not stopped shooting. They have not stopped shooting. And as a result of that, on all these different squads, I've also never been pressured once on the height. Not a single time. Actually, if you think about it, they haven't even been hit. They haven't even been shot back at. Oh my god, Chapix. Yo, chill, bro. You didn't have to do them like that. You did not have to do them like that. My dude. All right, you know what? We're going to watch this from Chapix's perspective and then watch it from uh, Crew's perspective. Uh, low mat 90s there in two different instances. The old Metro 90s and then he did the, the like Bizzle finisher. Also notice how he didn't RPG. Uh, like there's, there's, I guess there's a point, right? You're wasting their mats or whatever, but your ammo is way better at wasting their mats than, than the RPG. The RPG have to reload and all of a sudden the impact of your RPG is gone. I love that. I love that. That's a little map knowledge for you. Holy crap. All right? Taking out that floor because and then and then shooting inside that box. Sure, they can replace that floor, but guess what? They can't replace up above it and they can't place a stair to, to protect themselves. All right? All of a sudden that's a that's a weird building zone where it's like, well, there's already stairs here and it's not good for me, so I'm gonna get hit no matter what. That's some great map knowledge. There, you can't place a wall. Boom. He's dead. See, these are impact with the RPG. Before, if he had shot that at the turtle, sure, they would have exposed him. He might have been able to get some AR shots, but man, the damage of an RPG is so hard to avoid, especially late game when you're starting to run out of materials. See, he just sneaking it in there. Oh, man. Whoops, a little too much. Again, oh, he ran out of mats. Yeah, that slight mess up here with the uh, the stairs actually costed. It costed, but you know, who really cares, right? Who really cares? We'll watch Beehive because we're gonna go back and watch crew anyways. But this is domination. Did he just go down to try to pick up the RPGs? Oh, he did. He did. Uh, this is a 3v2, by the way. This is pretty cool. It's not over, and they know that. Oh, uh, he reloads both RPGs. It's beautiful. Now there, when, they, when they're not going to be able to get in anyways, I don't know. I guess I like that. It's also only two people, right? There's, there's very... It's going to be very difficult to sneak an RPG in because they know exactly the situation. It's three guys on higher ground against just us two. It's like, okay, well, instant waste of 160 mats. Instant waste of 160 mats. Did he just jump out? Cruiser jumped out in the zone. Hoggers. Yeah, they can't let this actually go to heal off. That's monk ass. Oh, did did Beehive just break through the the roof because because Crude called it? 
Remember when crew marked the roof? I think he did. What a call. What a call by crew. Is it like this could have been very bad. You, you never know. Uh, am I gonna be able to click this guy? Oh, I can just do this. Hey, he didn't have heels, but you never know, man. You never know. You could have 15 slurp fish. <laughs> you got 15 slurp fish. Can't speak. Oh, I almost didn't go back and watch all of Crew's aim. Who? Um, uh, crew, give me right. Speed this up a bit. Also, something to note is how, uh, yeah, he did actually take breaks. He didn't just go full bore. Tunnel, tunnel, tunnel. Tarp, 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 tarp. Right, he took some pauses right before he rebuilt the rest right give some time for this not only do you have the time right you have the time uh, you don't need to get so far ahead especially with all this pressure that your team is inflicting um but it also just gives more time for your your old tarp to um to gain some hp Slowing it down. Was it just that this pistol shreds? This is when Chapix pops off. Oh, my man was just finishing kills. Oh, nah. Oh, nah. I thought he was popping off. <laughs> my man was just finishing kills. I love that he doesn't jump in, jump in the box there with him. Oh! Oh! Later! What the? What the heck? Alright, I don't think anything actually happens. Yeah, okay, it's the 3v2 again. Alright, cool. Next game. Um, I'm going really slow. We've been live for... How long? Hour and 25 minutes, 20 of that being... Right now, 15 minutes of that basically being nothing. So, hour and five minutes. Okay, so we, we need a new plan to get through this a little quicker. I'm gonna watch the, the early game Storm Search plan and then move on, I think. Because I, I think their early game plan is very interesting. But, they did fly close into this hill so this guy has no opportunity of getting shots um, because again they've done their studies too they know that they're, they're not getting 50 50 at craggy don't need to worry about it at all this team has gotten a lot more comfortable but also they're kind of meta stratting it right because last time the play was to back up all right this time for some reason he's expanding over here and either way knowing that the plan for them was to back up fast off this hill now they have free reign over the coast. Very nice. I like it.
I really like it. Who's getting tagged? No, they're already, they're already calling it back up. This team knows. This team knows. Very nice. Very nice adjustments for this team. And also, very nice adjustments. They've had a different plan three times in a row. Different plan three times in a row. Anything else happen here? And also, how does first zone and second zone progress? This first zone, they get zone again. Uh, and they kind of, I wonder if it's like exactly the same type of fake base and move type of thing. Is there anything on the horizon? No, it's not. It's nothing. It's a little closer than this team has ever gotten. Okay, um, let's see, any super action, we'll watch Beehive, it's probably a snipe or something, or a grenade. It's the first time we've seen them, all the stack of nades, yeah, and it is a grenade. Oh, two, three stacks, holy crap. And could be a difference too, right? Um, depending on where zone goes, where second zone is, what happens in the early game, right? If they, if they had, imagine. If they had the same success with storm surge tags early game as they did, uh, as they did, maybe they wouldn't be carrying these nades. Maybe they're carrying something else. Also, what you get is what you have. So it is what it is. Like no power items this, this time at all, except for, okay, they have a sniper and an RPG, but only one RPG this time, which is different. Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Very nice. I like Beehive. I like. <laughs> my man is booking it with that body. He's like, nah, nah, nah. My boy, you're not going down. You are not going down. They're approaching. They're getting in. There's another space control whole thing, right? They pushed this team backed up. Okay, now we have your space. Now we have your base. Now we have all this room to work with. If so desired. All right, cool. Anyways, let's just look at the rotates basically where they start, where they end up. Oh, they're getting pushed from behind. Just, yeah, they're here. Hmm. Man, Chapex pops again? No, not as not as much as the other games. It's like Ritz pops. It's crazy to me that Pleasant wasn't more congested already. Um, but also more proof and more uh, just more evidence to the fact that yeah, people are liking these edge maps, edge zone type plays recently because of how congested center zone could be. They they take the positions they can get without getting tagged or getting grenaded or whatever, and also. Also evidence, possibly, that grenades and the whole grenade season has pushed people away from center zone, too. Right? That's the thing, right? There's always multiple reasons. Always multiple reasons why something is the way that it is. Do they have multiple houses here? Yeah, they do. Ritz is on the center. They're at doghouse. This tunnel outwards uh, by Beehive is an interesting one. Again, space control early. This is very similar to fake basing, right? If you snake out really far ahead, not only are you putting yourself in a position to catch next zone a little bit more safely, um, but you also are just controlling this space. You are keeping people away. When people see a build, sure, there is the possibility of them over always just going, going over and building over or taking it over, but generally, People are moving away from these things. They're trying to break line of sights from any sort of builds at all. And this was not fake, right? Obviously, obviously it wasn't fake. He was using it. But it's the same type of concept of space control. But just applied to the to the end game and towards the late game. 
I mean, technically, he wasn't using it the entire time, right? He went back and refarmed. I'd be curious if anybody else did the same kind of thing in multiple different uh, angles. Doesn't look like it. And this is what I talk about when I when I'm talking about oh, having a lot of space gives me more opportunity to make it towards next zone. All right, they could have gone this way. They they could have gone. Sorry, I'm gonna draw my map not in, in the middle of the screen where it's not really showing anything. They could have gone this way, right? Because they controlled this house. There could have been even tunnels somewhere over here. We don't know. I'm not gonna go look. They could have gone this way. They can also go center just because they control all this different like sure they could do that straight out of their box but now they have protection to go out of there and they could also wait and see what is going to happen on the different sides because they have all the space another benefit besides like just being really good and overall uh to going through builds to going through old people or old teams bases is extra loot right people engage in box fight debauchery and leave tons of loot left behind there's a there's a whole sniper there and could have been nice could have been nice you never know do i need it actually did i pick it up yes ritz picked it up i can tell because he had one bullet in it and his teammates needed to drop heavy ammo <laughs> you can tell because of the way that it is all right rich show us what you got baby Low ground, again, since game number one. I'd be curious what went behind their decision to actually build over that team um, in the first, or in the second game. I'd be very curious. They're very good at moving together in congestedness. And whoever's making this decisions here, it's kind of nuts. The, <laughs> the level that they are right on top of each other when they need to be, right? We've seen them be spread. They were spread in the first game. Very wide stances in their tunnels, um, mostly because they had good layers. When they have bad layers there, in that case, that was definitely a bad layer. That was... There's people on the left, there's people on the right, there's people above them. They were getting shot every time they kind of tried to make a uh, a change, All right? Um, now they're condensed, they're close. They're playing very, very tight. Is that Chapix placing traps again? Little Chapix, up to your old tricks. Okay, now that they get on a, uh, a slightly better layer, they're getting slightly more spread. It's kind of like poker, right? You play, uh, I don't know if you guys are poker guys. I'm not really, but I know about the concept of, you know, playing based on the, the button or whatever, or I don't, I don't know the terminology, right? But when you have a bigger opportunity to play, you play uh, looser, right? You play for hands that have less chance of actually being good. Um, and then when you're whatever position you might be, you play tighter because your hands uh, or, and tighter means you're playing hands that are 100 percent or very, very, very good chance of being good hands. Um, just based on like the position of play. In this case, it's very similar. right? They say tight when their layer is bad and they stay wide when their layer is good. And guess what? Now that's some some free kills.
He was on the edge of zone there. I'm curious actually what happened to him. Because he might have been making moves. Making moves that's good. Ah. He's covering the backside. And he gets screwed because he's not screwed, but. Oh, let me just continue. Which way it goes. Ah. Too much. Too much. Wait, what? He just died his zone? He died storm surge? He just died to storm surge. Yo, that's crazy. I never actually... That's new. A team with... Three, four, five kills died to storm surge? No, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. Well, well, everything is telling me that he's dying to storm surge. This is not telling me that <laughs> he died to storm surge. That's insane. How many? Oh, no damn player list with the Elam. Is there a thing that I can? There we go. Yes. Sword by limbs. No, you're not going to do it to me. I guess everybody has pretty high kills. Still, there's no chance. There's no chance. They're one of the teams with the, eh, never mind. They're pretty equal in terms of kills with the teams that are still alive. So I think this makes sense. They're like probably right on the edge. How did I get here? Okay, cool. No, I know it's not about kills. Um, Destiny. It's about like very obviously about damage, but the kills indicates to me damage and there's nothing I can do that checks damage. To a certain extent. Does thirsting contribute to damage? Yes. Last I checked, it did. But you never know, it could have changed. It could have changed. It's crazy the amount of kills you get from people coming into your box and you just being wide. Like this guy was dead the moment he stepped into this box trying to chase that kill. And he didn't even get it. Didn't even catch it. Oh, holy crap. He just, he just no, he, he did take a zone tick for that. I mean, he didn't have to, but it's still pretty interesting that he goes out into zone to, to tunnel that extra mile. I like it. It's a very good safety factor, too, because you think about people making zone plays with floppers these days. I mean, nobody would do it in this case right now, especially ahead of zone, maybe on the backside of zone. But hey, you never know. Oh my god, Chapix! What are you doing? How? How does this happen time and time again? These prediction traps are disgusting. Bro! There's just no way that's so filthy. He was already thinking about it right there. He was already thinking about it. Oh man, I wish I could see when he selects his trap. Can we see when he selects his traps? I don't think we can. I don't think replay mode is that good. No, we don't even see that he has a trap. Very nice, very nice.
Also, I never realized um, how good actually just making this this edit, this double edit on on your own floor and roof when somebody runs by. Right, it's the same concept as uh, when when you're above being able to do that. But when they run by, they have to close this, especially when they're making the mistake of you know um, editing through every single tile. That's why. That's another reason why that's a bad idea to be doing all the time. So, just because Scotty had to reset here, and this low ground peak is dirty. Think about these peaks, um, guys. When, when you're, whenever you're in an end game situation, and you you see, oh, there's a possibility I could have gotten. Right. the The reason you don't get these is because you don't actually know what the what what peaks are the best. That is just dirty. That is just filthy. That is just rude. That is just rude. Meanwhile, Beehive is getting murdered. There's nothing he can do. Who is this? I guess we'll find out soon. Skype Nika Fairwax and Vato. Vato! GG's. Okay. Same old, good old, good old. Holy crap. This team is gone. It's entirely gone. Where did they go? They must have started 50 50 steamy stacks. No, there's Rateful. No way. Is he by himself? My god. That's so sad. What happened? There's no way. There's no way, bro. F's for Rateful. F's for this team. Dude, that is brutal. How do three people not make it into the game? Three people. <laughs> Pepe hands indeed. Oh my God. That is so sad. Can I get some sad music? Jesus. <laughs> I thought they pushed them off. I thought it was like, well, I don't want to mess with this anymore. These guys keep pushing us. And uh, our loot sucks, so I'm going to leave. <laughs> it's going to be funny when they go over the hill and it's just not there. There's just nothing for them to grab. Actually, no, hold on. It kind of looks like they're not going for it anymore. Which I like. Um, given the fact that they actually don't have first zone. First zone, this is the first game that we've seen that they don't have first zone. Um, mind you, they still get second place in 17 eliminations. So, yeah, that happened. Cool. They made it in first zone with not seeing a single person. Okay, now they need a plan. They, actually, they don't. They don't. They could also just abandon their storm search plans altogether because based on the amount of people. Also, you think about what would happen if they got first zone in this game. Would they have pushed in the direction of these guys? Would they have pushed? All right. Because now we've conditioned these guys to fall back every single time. Do we even need to go up here? That's the kind of mind games that go into these early, early game strats that I, I love. Um, yeah, so then tags. Let's see what action happens. Okay, they do get in a fight. Crew looks to be. Oh no. Probably Beehive and Ritz that we want to watch. I'll watch Beehive. We haven't watched too much Beehive today. Oh, come on. It's going to be grenades again. I know it's going to be grenades again. Sniper, sniper RPG, is it power weapons? Oh, I love this. This guy's dead. <laughs> Hold on, is this our, is this our poor old friend? Rateful? Come on, score wheel. Oh, it's Martos? GG's man. Poor solo. 
<laughs> he just gave her. <laughs> okay, they get into a fight still. Going forward. Oh crap. You guys are right on top of them. Lucky those nades weren't good. Yeah, lucky. Yoink, 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 yoink. He's gonna yoink somebody. Please yoink somebody. Oh my god. Oh my god. Well, this is just unfair and not very nice. Like, holy. Heck a rude. He's got six kills. I didn't even notice that traffic has got kills in this meantime. That's a heck of rude. Did you get two kills with the RPG? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> Ooh. I like, I like, I really like Chappic chasing up the hill there, knowing that this is the direction this team is going to go. Knowing that. To find that extra angle. Man. So they uh, they partook in a little bit of a, a bit of W key action. This looks like a finish or maybe a solo. A finish or a solo. Gita, it's literally five minutes to your food. By the way, let's be serious here. At this point in time, they have already freaking won the tournament. <laughs> they have already won the tournament. Lord and Savior Chapix is down. And he's back. Don't worry. Don't worry. He was never he was never in trouble in the first place. He was never in trouble. Who pops off? A little crew? Crew and beehive? I'm gonna be watching crew here. Good old TSM crew. Is this a low ground play again? A low ground game? Okay. All right, guys, I might need to switch to sitting soon. I don't know why. I just can't stand recently. During Bottobies. Actually, during all the casting. I guess I need to eat more. What the? Let's go, Harrians. Boy, that is quite loud. <laughs> that is quite loud. Didn't realize it was that loud over the sound of my own voice. Jesus. Okay, so. I'm still very interested and very curious what the reason for them going for height in second game was. My only thought so far is double RPG. What do you guys think, chat? Why, why did they build over that team in second game? Whereas they have not done that in game one, game three, and game four now. Chapix calls. <laughs> 
<laughs> Come on, insight, chat picks. Give us some insight. Well, what made like was it just the team? The team was whack. Following IGL and realize it's not smart to do. <laughs> Because what is there to love if you have already won? Uh, in second game, they didn't win by then yet. Game two was free high. Okay. Maybe I should have looked at it a little bit more. It, it kind of just looked like they just built over. Chapik says it was free high. Remember that was the game you got you you ran straight through the center and there was people here. They were very early in 50-50, so maybe that's also a factor into why it was free. Whereas other times it's been like, well, they've always been very congested and uh, risky to go for. You know, these underwater plays are sick. Um, if there's a path underwater through somebody's builds, they very very rarely will see. Not that this was there. Like opponents' builds or anything like that. Oh, actually, they're gonna do it again. Oh. Mythic fish is in there. Just kidding. loves to spam these traps. He loves to. He loves to. <laughs> um, I noticed this last game too. Uh, in squads, when people try, when people get edited on, their first instinct is to place stairs. But what ends up happening is you screw your teammate and he gets stuck on the other side of the stairs and forced into a 2v1 or just forced into a full on 50 50. All right. That's happened twice. It's happened twice that I've seen so far. Man, it's really hard to follow these guys in their tunnels. They're just very, 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 very fast. Yep. More preemptive trapping. It's a beautiful thing. Um, crew is always carrying fish and he's always at the back and he's always killing people who end up getting screwed, but he's always carrying the fish and he's like, like I, I've seen it multiple times. Okay. They all have freaking fish this time, but, um, yeah, that's been a thing. That has been a thing. The last game we watched when they were in Pleasant Park, he died because he was in zone making fish plays. I mean, it wasn't fully that, but he was in the back. Notice how he actually blocked there. Um, there's a situation a lot where your teammate gets in a box up here and you're trying to go up the ramp and then you make the decision to edit, but you get shot from the side. It's nice that he blocks before going up through the floor. I like, I like, I like. That's a great way to test high ground is just Hold up, let's just try to double ramp out of my out of my box real quick. Try to double ramp out, and then they're like, No, you will not try to take height on me. Instant two RPGs. Instant spam. Oh. 
<laughs> crew, come on, man. I hit those. Um, notice the, the way he plays his wall. How aware he is of these angles that he's taking. The angles that he's peeking. And the movement he has to put himself in good angles. Okay, as soon as this is no longer, as soon as there's nothing in this box, there's nothing above. And as soon as he realizes the guy's over here, he plays the wall. Right? He doesn't, he doesn't try to get up close to him. He doesn't try to, you know, do anything else. He could have maybe edited over here, but that would have maybe given up his position. Right? Look how lost this guy is. He has no clue. And the right shoulder peak. He should have been dead off the first shot, but it is what it is. Meantime, Chapix has gotten up behind where you at, right next to crew. Switch, switch. Ah! Ah! What's the situation here? Two teams? 3v3? What's that? Oh, don't pause. Don't unpause. We're not going to be able to drone free this. Crawl wheel! You guys love hotkeys and... Ways to zoom in. Okay, well, I can't. Oh, it's 4ZR and DRG, the guys who won week one. Cool. Oh. Wait, there are three teams. Are you telling me that this interface is a lie? What? Oh, I'm clicking on people who are dead. What? That's kind of crazy. Okay, anyways. Three v three against the Boyer Kluja, Thomas HD, and who's the last guy? I'm not sure. Oh, oh, crew! There's the aim. You were saving it for later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. 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 How did Chapix get here? How did Chapix get here? I like that he's thinking. About storm plays and possible people making storm plays that was dirty and if he had the mats that would have been so nice was he still was boyer still up above him they are literally seconds no no, no sorry like i think they're a rocket slightly different from winning this game. This is the guy. I think that's Boyer right there. Yes, drone free worked. Yeah, he just builds up, I believe. I don't know. He didn't have the builds to be able to block this at all anyways. So he falls all the way down. Sucks. No way. He actually still has mats. Gru could have had this. But anyways. Close. But no cigar. That's so nasty. He already had the mats, he didn't pick up extra. Could have had this. Could have had this. Wait a second. Did I just see 100 Thieves Hydra on my friends list? Am I leaking? <gasps> Going to Twitter. There's nothing. There's nothing on his Twitter. Ah, hopefully it's just his name. <laughs> Where am I going? My settings. Uh, hmm. I'm getting really tired. I've been at this for. Two hours. Do I skip this game? I think I skipped this game. But I don't want to. 
I don't want to. I'll do it for you guys, chat. Look bottom left chat. Sorry, I'll look after. He joined Hydra for a couple of days now? Blah, 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 blah. All right, early game. Tropics is dead. Love. Early game, same thing. Are these guys in the game? Do they get first zone? Do they do another push because they get first zone? Do they leave it at as it is? They just mark a llama. I think they did. Okay, these guys are all in. Very cool. 100 players in the game. That's pretty nice. Uh, they do kind of get first zone. Ooh. Uh oh. A little sneaky beaky. They're gonna. Nope, they're not. Again. No point really if they're not getting anything. Also, they've already conditioned these guys for all the control. If that was ever an actual aspect of their play that they were pushing for. Uh oh. Uh oh. Little counter strat. Beehive. Uh oh. Uh oh. Spaghettio. Beehive. You are dead. <gasps> he heard him. He heard him. He's out of here. He's fucking gone. Look how they all change. No, Chapix is the only guy who changed. Come on. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. There's no chance. There's no chance. Are these nades? From, from Chapix? No, they were not. Or Beehive. Ooh, thanks, Auto Director. Damn, actually, they pushed. I did not realize. I was all stretching and shit. There's, to be fair, you push the, the people who are ahead by like 60 points at this point. You're going to get W key. They don't give a freak. They literally don't care. <laughs> I didn't even realize it was a storm fight. Good old storm fight. Yeet. Can I remind you guys that they still go on to get 8th and something like 15 kills? No, not 15 kills. Like, I don't know. Some ridiculous amount. For what this is, for what is happening right now. Kind of crazy. Kind of crazy. Um, that was really cool what he just did there. Slight, but um, when the boat was not boosted, was not boosting, um, the guy, uh, Chapix was getting out and getting back in. I just kind of, they were literally ghost riding the boat. <laughs> ghost riding the boat. Yo, Donnie with the 10 gifted subs. You're insane. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate me. Appreciate you. For real. And all you do for the community, man. You know it. You know it. Sub gift leader Pog. Yes, sir. Skip ahead a bit. No nades this time, so anything they actually do will probably be pretty interesting. I uh, missed a kill with two, but actually I missed all the kills. Whatever. Watch their fourth zone rotate.
<laughs> that peak was kind of funny, actually. The floor and the the wall was here, and this there were stairs this way, and he edits the stairs, and then just jump peaks over the wall. Kind of funny. I like how um, whoever that was didn't come over until Trapix was ready and uh, chilling. Hmm. Interesting decision to go for the box fight. Or did they? They probably didn't have much mats. Yeah, let's go back and look at their mat status right here. Thirty-three builds, forty-three. I don't know. Still don't necessarily think. I mean, it is what it is. GG's. Whoops. Okay, last one. 10 kills. Three, third place. <laughs> you know this is Chapix. <laughs> oh, it's Ritz. Okay, cool. I meant to say, you know this is the team that we're interested in watching. Nice, nice, nice. Let's keep. Holy crap, this zone south. My goodness. I gotta watch a little bit of how they got here. Golly. Through Misty? And how late there? There's already so many people up on this mountain, but they push, they push, they push. They gotta get to it. Actually, no, they decided to base down. We got. Three of these zones and NA. I like that they stay down, given the fact that there's two mountains and center is not towards the mountain. And then, even though they had a spot, this mountain is still possibly getting half and half, so they make sure they build up to it. This one, sure, it could, but it's not all the way up on the mountain, so they're chilling if that's the case. This is the much bigger risk if they're not involved, if they're not positioned on the mountain, they're kind of screwed. They could be screwed. I just zoned out. I'm not going to lie, chat. I definitely zoned out. <laughs> I definitely just hella zoned out. I was thinking about a million different things. <laughs> Y'all didn't see nothing. Y'all didn't see nothing. Yo, my man is dead. My man is so dead. Holy crap. These guys are far. Ha! <laughs> 
Sorry, dude. Yo, that RPG, man. So strong on these side mountain push or the side mountain peaks. Rotates, I should say. Cause they knock they knock people down and give them the possibility of getting them all the way down. Oh we're about to Well, that's just unfortunate for these guys. <laughs> everything. They just killed, they just threw everything on those guys. They only have four kills, or actually only three kills when this end game started. Just keep that in mind. Big zone play. Oh, wee. Big zone play. Mongrel! Phase Mongrel! No, oh, they are chilling in zone. This, my friends, is the is the uh, dominance of fish. They clutch top three solely because of fish. I mean, and they got that kill on Mongol, but like Ritz, for example, still still could be alive. All right, never mind. Oh, he just got more fish. Yes. This is the thing, right? People play specifically for fish so they can outlast any teams possible to get these placements. Oh, oh, he did pop it. Cool. Meanwhile, Ritz is still in zone fishing. It's interesting how to play when you have a teammate alive. Right in zone, like normally Ritz might just like, I don't know. Maybe he maybe he doesn't normally stay in zone here. Dang, he just got popped. Uh, or or maybe he stays longer in zone, or maybe I don't know. Maybe he makes a different play besides shooting these guys. Maybe he makes a commandment on them. <laughs> that right shoulder right there. That was. He's able to isolate this guy completely. They're both looking at him, but he can just completely just wiggle on him. Yes. See, that's what I'm talking about, right? When you place the stairs to kind of double layer, it's GG's. He can't do anything from here, can he? Okay. Oh. Uh. No way he almost did this to them. Yo, so close. If it wasn't for that P90, good, good res re response from these guys. But man, was that close. Man, was that close to <laughs> Chapix just clutching out the game. Holy. All right, guys. That's going to be it. That's going to be a wrap for this one. It was a long one just because we got really into the first couple of games and then kind of slow down towards the end, so I apologize for that. But regardless, that was Chapix, Beehive Crew, and Ritz from last weekend's FNCS. Awesome dominance, really, 132 points. I think they were 80 points or 60, 70 points above second place, which is ridiculous. Very similar to what we saw Zayt Saffin and High Sky and Commandment doing the first week. Tomorrow, we're probably going to be watching Liquid Luck, I'd guess, but I might switch it up and do something slightly different, definitely FNCS-related. Uh, or I might not do anything at all if I'm feeling lazy. Regardless, hope you guys liked. If you didn't, like, subscribe, do all the things on my social media, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, Twitch. Um, I'll be back. More content just like this. Peace.